welcome to another video. In this video, I want to cover how we can view data in a pandas data frame and also how we can select that data out of our data frames. Let's jump over to an Excel spreadsheet to look at the data we'll be using for this video. Here in our Excel workbook called pandas workbook, we have four columns. We have an age column, a name column, occupation, and then an identifier column. Let's go ahead and create a data frame using this Excel spreadsheet. Let's go ahead and jump over to a text editor. To begin, we'll import the packages that we need. So let's import NumPy as MP, and then we'll import pandas as PD. We'll drop down a few lines and create a variable called Excel file, and this will just be the name of our workbook. So mine is pandas workbook dot xlsx. Next, we'll go ahead and create the data frame. So we'll say df equals pd dot read excel, and then we'll pass in the excel file. Now when we print df, we should be able to see the data frame created in the terminal. Open up your command prompt or terminal, depending on your operating system, and we'll type in python3 and then the name of the script. So pd index dot pi is the name of mine. And when we execute, we should be returned a data frame that looks very similar to the excel workbook that we have. When we get the result, we see all the columns that we have in our Excel file in our data frame. We also, by default, have an index column that starts at the integer zero and goes down to the length of our series minus one. This index column can be thought of as a label for each row and we'll use it later on in the video. First, let's talk about how we can view data in our pandas data frame. We'll drop down a few lines and type in print, df, and then we'll use an attribute called head, h-e-a-d. Then we'll pass in the number of lines that we want to view at the beginning of the data frame. So say we wanted to view the first five lines of our data frame, we would pass in five. When we execute this, we should be returning the first five lines of our pandas data frame, which we are right here. We can also view the last entries in our data frame. We can do this with the attribute called tail. So here we'll say tail, and if we want to view the last five entries in our data frame, we would pass in five. When we execute, we get the last five entries. We're also able to pull out the index, columns, and data types of our data frame. So pulling out the index is df.index. If we want to pull out the columns of our data frame, we use df.columns. Then if we want to pull out the data types, all it is is the data frame with the attribute dtypes. We'll save this and execute to see the return in the terminal. We see that the index is given to us in a range, so we start with zero, we have a step size of one, and the stopping integer is 29. The columns are given to us like this, so we return to every column that we have in our data frame, and they're all aligned on the same index. The data types are listed here as well. Here it's important to remember that each column in a data frame is actually just a series. Each series only has one data type, so that's why we're able to pull out these data types by using this attribute. With each column being a series, it makes it really easy for us to pull out these series values from our data frame. Say we wanted to pull out every name value in our data frame, so we could just say df, use square brackets, and then pass in that column label. So our label is just the heading of the series, so name, and we'll pass that in using square brackets. When we execute this, we're returned all the name values in our data frame. Like we said, each column in a pandas data frame is just a series. So if we were to check the type, we should be returned a series. So we'll use print type, and then we'll say df, and pass in name again. When we execute, we get just what we expect, and we see that's a series object. We can use the square brackets whenever we're pulling out a smaller object from our larger object. Remember that scalar values make up series, and series values make up data frames. So if you're pulling out a series from a data frame, you can use the square brackets. If you're pulling out a scalar value from a series, you can also use square brackets as well. So if we were to create a variable called names and set this equal to this line of code, whenever we use square brackets on this again, we should just be returned one element, so names and then we'll pull out the first element in the series. When we execute, we see that we returned only a scalar value of the name Adam. This way of selecting data using square brackets is fine if you're just going for working code. However, if you're going for production code, we need to use the selection methods that we have available to us in the pandas package. This is just because if we use square brackets all throughout our script, we might run into an error called chained indexing. Chained indexing is a problem whenever we have large data sets and we need our script to behave in a certain way. There's a little complexity to it, but in short, Chained indexing just makes our script behave in an unpredictable way. So now let's talk about those data accessing methods that we have available to us. We have two accessing methods for groups of values, and we have two accessing methods for a single value. Both of these have a way to pull out values either by their labels or by their integer positions in the data frame. Let's say that we wanted to pull out the same name, so Adam, using these data accessing methods. If we do it by label, we can say print data frame dot at, 
This is the data accessing method to pull out one value using labels. We'll put in a square bracket, and now we need to pass in the labels of the value that we want. The first thing we need to pass in is the row selection. The second thing that we need to pass in is the column selection. Looking at our data frame, we see that Adam is in the first row, so that means we need to use this label here. We'll say zero as the first argument, and then we'll pass in name as the column label to return this value. So we'll go up and type in name. Now when we print this, we should be returned Adam in our terminal. We see that we have one Adam here, for the label selection, and then we have the atom right above it for this selection. Let's go ahead and comment this out, that way we don't get confused. Here we just use the integer value zero because our index column is labeled with integer values. If our index column had different labels, we would just pass those in. Let's go ahead and see that now. So if we were to create a second data frame, so df2, set it equal to pd.readexcel, we'll pass in the excel file from above, and then we'll say index column is equal to the name column. We'll go ahead and print this to see what it looks like. So print df2, we'll execute the script. And now instead of having an index column of integer values, we have an index column of names. So if we wanted to pull out a single value again using labels, instead of using a zero integer value here, we had to use the name. So let's say that we wanted to pull out the occupation of Beth, which is a scientist. We would say print df2 and then the method at square brackets. And since the row label is now Beth, we would type in Beth, and then the column label is occupation. So we would type in occupation. When we save this, we should be returned scientist, which is the occupation of Beth. We see that we've done just that. We're also able to pull out a single value using their integer positions. We can print df2, and then instead of the at method, we can use integer at, square brackets, and now we need to pass in the integer position of the value that we want. Since we're trying to pull out the occupation of scientist, this is in the zero first row, and it's in the zero first column. So instead of passing in the labels, here we would pass in the integer position of that value. When we save and execute this, we should be returned scientist again. So we were able to pull out the same value using both an integer and label based method. Now let's talk about how we can pull out groups of data instead of just one individual value. To pull out a group of values using the labels how we did here, we have access to the dot loc method. Let's drop down and say print, and then we'll go back to working with our first data frame, and then we'll use the method loc. So the same way the method dot at uses labels, LLC uses labels as well. We'll say square brackets. And now the first thing that we need to pass in is the row selection, and the second thing is the column selection. Here though, instead of just being able to use one label value for a row selection and one value for a column selection, we can actually use either a label, a list of labels, or a logical boolean for a row selection. So since our labels of the first data frame are just integer values, let's type in a list of those, and we'll say zero, two, four, and six. So let's say we wanted to slice out the age through the occupation columns. When we execute this, we'll return the rows of 0, 2, 4, and 6 with only the slice of the columns age through occupation. The dot loc method is very useful too because we can use a logical statement to select the data from our data frame. Let's see how we can do these logical statements now. So let's print df dot loc square brackets and now we need to pass in the logical statement that we want. So let's say inside the data frame where the identifier column is equal to true, return these values. We'll save our file and execute again. Now when we execute, we're returned only where the logical statement returns true. So we have only true values in our identifier column. The last thing we need to talk about is how we can access the same data groups by using integer values. We'll say print df and then the method is dot I L O C. We'll type in square brackets, and then the same way that we have to select the rows and columns and all the other ones we do here too. The options for the row and column selections are a list, a slice, or a single integer value. Let's say that we want a slice of the rows, so we want zero as our starting step, five as the ending step, and then a step size of one. And then for our column selection, let's say that we want columns zero and one. When we execute, we're given the first five columns, and we're given the columns of integer position zero and integer position one. There's a few takeaways from this video. The first is if we want production level code, there's four different accessing methods that we have in our pandas data frame. If we want to access elements by their label or by the integer position, those accessing methods change. If we just want working code, then we're fine to use square brackets to pull out the information that we want. We'll get plenty of practice in using data accessing methods later on. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please let me know. Until next time.